Hey guys, it's Nick here again. Today I'm trying to fix the Instant Pot the pressure cookers. As you see, we'll plug it in. Nothing happens here. Now let's plug in the toaster and see if the receptacle is working. Sometimes you have a wiring issue in your receptacles and uh, Oh look at that, the light turns on. That means the power is available. So that must be the issue inside the instant pot. So let's see what's wrong with it. I take out the, the, the lid, the inside pot, and I turn it upside down. Just need to take out this thing. So we just need to turn it a bit. All right, so we'll just pull this one out. Then we we'll start taking the one, two, and three. Take out that screw and just slip to the pot. I mean the outside shell. Thing out. So we have this. <clears throat> one might be positive, one might be negative. Coming from here. Split into one blue line to the heating element and another one is this pink line goes to the bottom I already stripped it open before this is actually a fusing side I'm gonna show you what's my problem here wires okay, going to this one's only 20 for 20 ohms this is for testing what's the resistance on the heating element so we're just getting those two so 13.8 sorry 13.9 ohms and our voltage is at um, 110 volts divide by 14 okay 13 14 divide by 14 ohms we're roughly running about 8 amps or 7 amps so that was the amperage that this whole device was running now let's check some continuities. Connected the negative side onto one side of the plug. This is an OL, which is out of a limit. So let's see if I go uh, here, check the wires. Resistance went to zero. If I move it to the other side, continuity went to 13.9. And if we look at the other pink wire, it's the same thing coming out. The other side of the plug. So the other side is this wire come out and turn into this pink wire. And if I do to this side. Oh. So very little resistance. Maybe it's, I'm not having a, a solid contact because I'm keep wiggling my wires so that'd be better this time roughly one ohms and if I go to the other side of it out of limit left side oops left side 0 0.4 ohms <clears throat> this side zero out of limit so uh, infinity which means there's a disconnection inside this fuse i was worried about something inside there but it's less likely to have uh, electronic components get burned out it's more likely it's the, the wiring right now so the plan would be snip off the this fuse and putting a new fuse and and put it back into the circuit and test it out uh, the bracket this one it used to be like hooking up on this insulation layer you already seen what I've done here so but in order to reach it down it was on the screw attaching to this guy and don't lose that the lock washer inside and you're just trying to lift this circuit board just take them off on the bracket just wiggle it a little bit and pry it a little bit and just pop out and you have access to this bolt so that will disconnect this guy and just wiggle, 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 and you're able to take the whole shell out. 
of course you're gonna go through the wires. Then this gives us the space here to work around this thing. Tools I got something I bought from Amazon a long time ago. This is a uh, my socket for the fuse. So what I need to use that and just cut out the line here and using these wire connectors. Also I bought like a whole bunch from Amazon a long time ago and you can just connect the two sides and crimp on the two ends and using a heat gun or uh, something that mini torch you can just heat up on the two ends. It'll shrink and wrap up the, the wires. Um, here is a 10 amp fuse. Here we go, it shows a 10 amp so that should be adequate and I'll be protecting my receptacle as well. Here's my plier and the crimper, I mean crimper, so these are the tools I'm going to use. See, I already snip it off on this side. I start to peel back the insulation cover and also have a plastic. I just want to pull back the, the fabric a little bit, then we can prepare to expose the, the conductors for the connections. This then I just cut it off, because you already have the exposed conductors on the outside, so don't need to do too much about it. And also just cut off this side here. Um, I do have a tool which is a wire stripper. So you put a wire in there, you just clamp down and it will pull the insulation off. So expose the, the lengths you need it. So I'm going to have this end connect to this thing and have the other end connect to this thing. And when everything's done, I'm going to put this thing, this connector back into on the circuit board, the bottom left corner on there. But I took it off just to make life easier for me. So this is the one I took off. It was a 10 amp fuse. Or right, it just it says it was a, yeah, SE fuse. And they have some kind of model number on it. I just don't like this style. And I have uh, easy ones to put in. And it's good for the wattage on it. So that's the model number of the fuse. What I did is I made the two ends, which is just using this tool as I showed previously. And I put those the insulation sleeves, which are from this the pot in it originally. I took it off and I cut it in half and put on the two ends. Once this thing is connected with this wire, I'm going to slide this insulation upwards and to cover the whatever the metal is exposed, if there was any. Just in case, I don't think I'll be any metal exposed, um, but I do think I'll have, where is it, something exposed on this end, because they have very long exposure here. So actually I'm going to move this insulation onto this piece of the wire. That will probably do that. If you see that, I have already made the two connections. We'll just piece the, put a metal piece into the, this half and use the crimper to crimp down. And same thing for the fuse end. And I already insert the fuse into it. Yeah, well, never mind. I already put a 10 amp fuse into it. Um, so now we just need to finish this end and that end. I have made the connections around from and added this uh, additional fuse. So as you can see the black leads already on the, the plug and out of the limit on the meter. So let me put, uh, where is it? I'm going to put this into the bottom and uh, testing the wires. Oh look at that. So resistance is 0 0.03 which is acceptable. And I think is mostly the the contacts in between those two connectors that's causing the, the measurement. It must be not touching it very well. Okay. This is where I should be doing. Yep. 0 0.04, 0 0.03. Okay, I should have plugged it in and tested it out. I just put the, the scene loosely in it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I have this plug back in. I have this the plugs. Let's go to the wall. Oh, you heard a beep. And you can see the scene was saying off now. Here we go. That means it's working now. So the problem is solved. <clears throat> so 
unplug it. I just unplugged it. The next thing to do is just use a mini torch to heat up these two ends to finish off the, the connections. And if you need it, you can just push those insulation to where it needs and tie it up. Fasten it down with the bracket. Where's my bracket? Somewhere. Oh, here we go. Yeah, just using the bracket to tie it down. And that's it. I'm just using my little mini torch, which is this guy. Um, whatever the brand that is. I'm not sponsored by any of them. So just heat up the two ends and the whole thing will shrink. And then make a seal to the wire, to the insulation. So in case when you're cooking and you have an overflow with a porridge or a soup or whatever, it didn't seal well, it's going to flow along the inside. It would not cause any short circuiting, shorting on it. So that's just the insulation for the conduct inside. Let's do some tests. We'll just put everything in. Put in place. Let's plug it in. Oh, I heard a beep. So let's make something. Doesn't matter. Maybe that's too. So that will be set for 20 minutes. And when it start, here we go. It shows on. It started and it clicked. Well done. It's fixed. <laughs>